You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. Jared Mounts. And today we got something really special. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Devil's Dew. Um, it's a fantastic maple flavored whiskey with more information about them in the episode description. We have a cool episode tonight. We are actually, I'm just going to be sitting here and enjoying. I'm a member of the audience like you guys at home. And we're going to be telling some stories today uh, fueled by alcohol. So um, why don't you take it off? Let's go for it. Yeah. So i uh, got a good buddy, Steve. Morris here and uh so we're gonna be telling some stories just uh from our what do we say 20 20 some years 27 years that we've known each other uh met each other at Shepherd Shepherd College both went there and uh hit it off right from the beginning because we're both outdoorsmen both like to hunt and fish and uh I can remember sitting in the dorm room midnight watching river runs through it I bet we watched that at least 50 times and we would fast forward to just the fishing scenes the trout <laughs> trout scenes and uh uh just kind of you know fished together and hunted together and and uh, you got me into turkey hunting and then uh you know that seemed to be a, a favorite time of the year because we would turkey hunt in the morning and then <laughs> so cool. smallmouth fish on the river yeah. in the afternoon and so uh i haven't seen Stephen while we coached together coached at james wood had a lot of good times there and uh and so i can never forget too when i first met steve um you know he would tell me stories and and i'd think there's no way that's just that story is too (laughs) far-fetched like nothing like that is going to happen to a person and i'm like you know he's lying he's stretching the Mm -hmm. truth there's no way and then i'll never forget we went down he's from st albans west virginia so we went down and talked to your buddies rick and matt and Whoever else might be, but it's usually yeah. usually one of the two of them. In yeah. fact, I'm gonna backtrack too. It wasn't St. Albans. We were down in Stanton, and we go down to that cabin and, and oh, hunt that was, and uh, fish. Yeah, a little trout stream ran through it in Stanton. Yeah, that was Doug that came and met us there. Yeah. yeah, and so, but we left there one one evening to go down to the burger joint to get something to eat. And you were in the other vehicle, and I was with Rick, and and Rick started telling me these stories verbatim that Steve had told me, and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me! Like that really <laughs> happened, Rick? And he's like, he laughed. He said, yeah. Is that really happened? So I said, man, you know what? Steve shoot me straight. It's it's uh, this stuff really has really happened to him. And so, uh, well, what's interesting is I had a brother in law that uh, was from Kansas, and um, he had uh, heard a lot of the same stories. And you you probably met him. And uh, at one point, he went back to us, and we had a mishap on a on a boating trip oh and um was that the pontoon boat that was the pontoon uh-huh. boat the night before a wedding and uh, he rolled in to uh the house that he was staying at some relatives <laughs> and he said uh he said you know what i used to think everything he told me was a lie he, <laughs> said, he said i'm never coming back to this town <laughs> and now this this story too and this was one of the stories and i should have you know, learned then when that story came out that not to get in a boat with Steve, but, uh, <laughs> that pontoon boat, he said when they, they were going up river and when they throttled down, they had so many people on the front of the boat that it dove down plus the current. And yeah. he said a guy was like six foot up on the front and he was armpit deep in water. Well, it was the canal river. So it's a big <clears throat> body of water and we were headed up river in the middle of the night uh on a 14 man pontoon boat with 16 people in it oh my god and uh we we probably had surpassed the um the weight limit as well <laughs> and uh one you know we uh we all grew up around each other and there was you know we we gave each other a hard time and as we're headed up river one of the guys is, is ribbing the guy driving the boat about something and so he shuts the motor off and and the uh, next thing you know, we're the the prop was out of the water, the back. and so we got everybody to the back of the boat, and then the whole boat proceeded to be <laughs> underwater. So it took it a while to get back up, but it was it was an experience. And there was years later that boat, uh, well, somebody stole the boat. It got stolen, and then yeah. it, years later it, they saw it. Somebody had whoever they stole it, it, they found it. Thing yeah. went running by them or yeah, something. Yeah, there were trees growing through it and stuff, and it was. <laughs> oh my God. It was, so anyway, so that's kind of, you know, that's, that's Steve in a nutshell, but, uh, and then we fast forward, you know, I was talking about, you know, turkey hunting and fishing. Um, I work at Lowe's in Martinsburg and <clears throat> on my breaks, I'd go over to Sparks Sporting Goods store, which is no longer there, but a lot of listeners may know, remember Sparks. Mm-hmm. 
And so on my break, I'd go around and, you know, look at the hunting and fishing stuff. And I, so I got my eye on this, this Indian river canoe. I don't remember if it was 16 foot, 17 foot, but real nice fiberglass canoe. I can tell you how big it is now. Flat, <laughs> about half of that, right? Uh, just a flat water canoe, uh, green and, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was pretty expensive, you know, for a college kid, you know, trying to pay off, you know, truck and just loans and different things mm-hmm. like that. But uh, anyway, so I'd go in on my break every time and like, you know, man, this canoe, I want to buy this canoe because I'd grown up with Caleb. We'd canoe all the time on the Shenandoah. And so you know, my predicament was this. I'm just going to let you know, like, the significance of this canoe. Like, <clears throat> at that time, too, the, the girl I'd been dating, I eventually married, uh, first wife, you know, I we were about five years in, six years into our relationship. So you're getting to the point where you're thinking about buying a ring. So oh boy. Uh, true story. You know, I had a little extra money and I got a ring by ring or this canoe, you know, and that's, it's, it's really a tough decision, but, uh, I went in and bought that canoe and uh, before I bought the ring, received a lot of crap over that, but, but that canoe, you know, brought me a lot of joy. Well, you kept it at my at my house. Yeah, I did at your parents' house, house for, in Charleston. So we could hit the that's Potomac, right. and that's right. While we were in school, and that's what we would float to Potomac. I remember staying in a in a uh, cave on the Potomac, you know, yeah. from so, below so Dam Four to Shepherdstown. Stayed, stayed in a cave. That was a pretty cool yeah. story. I'm not yeah. sure where you're going, but we'll we'll consider that rent that was unpaid for a little oh, while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, <laughs> we can do that. Well, then we'll have to turn that back around on uh, <laughs> yeah well, on canoe, interest. But, uh, <laughs> So anyway, but we, uh, so that canoe though, and took it up Sleepy Creek, you know, and messed around with it. But so let's fast forward to, we get to, you know, the North Fork of the Shando where we did a lot of our fishing. And, uh, and this is, by the way, this is the, I don't know if you can see it from there, but this is, mm-hmm. is the Indian River canoe. And we uh, zoomed in and we'll, we'll yeah, put a we'll screenshot it on there on there as well. On there. So, um, so one of the particular trips we did, there's so many trips that we've done, but, um, one of the, the trips I remember, a uh, low, lot of low water bridges on that <coughs> that section, yeah. and technically, where, where did we float from? Um, Rhodes Bottom. There's a private low water bridge, and mm-hmm. the way I found that, I went and knocked on doors, and a lady. Um, I've told this story before, but it was at the base of the mountain uh, down Tom's Brook, and uh, this river was right there at the base of the mountain. It had a farm and silo and everything, and we were knocking on doors and trying to find a place where you could just put in because we were going to take out at Deer Rapids. And a uh, little old lady came out and sat down in a rocking chair and there's deer running through the field. I thought I'd die and go into heaven. But uh, <clears throat> she said, you know, she didn't let anybody put in right there, but her neighbor right next door. And of course you're talking a hundred acres or something. She said, he's got a low water bridge and he would generally charge a couple bucks and let you put in. So we drove over there, Caleb and I drove over there and, and uh, sure enough, the farmer was working on his tractor and he said, oh yeah, I just charged about five bucks to, Put in, so that, that was a deal. Mm. You know, so we dropped five bucks off, put it in his mailbox, mailbox and we'd yeah. float from there on down. So these low water bridges, though, you know, there could be different heights and levels depending on how high the bridge is, but they're all pretty much low. Now, you, you're technically the safest things probably take out and go around it, but you could float under them as long as the river wasn't up too much. Okay. Just depends on what time of year we What time of year, and if it, so you'd hit the hole and you'd lay back. So you could lay straight back. And then you could go, and when you went under it, the bridge is literally like right here with Shh. you laying back. So you you just fit mm. under it. We wouldn't fit nowadays. Nowadays, we would not <laughs> fit. So, But then we would. So Steve got down. He got down in this position here. And I went to get back, and there's less room to back. And I forgot I had some stuff back there. And, I, and the water's moving along pretty good clip. And I, I should have, you know, moved the stuff back there. And I couldn't go forward. So I was kind of – and I was getting close to it. So – only thing I knew to do is is at that point he was already under the bridge. I went and stood up, and I went ahead and just like this, I, I helped myself up on the on the bridge, and I ran across the bridge. Okay, and I'm look, I'm standing here looking like this as I see Steve come out the other side of the bridge, and when I, what I see him coming out is this: he's laying back, <laughs> and, and just his eyes are slammed shut. Oh my god! And and I just kind of chuckled myself, not out loud, just chuckled, and and it, once my seat comes in, I jump down and I get in there, and the boat kind of new kind of does this number take up and paddle and he sits up and it was like 30 seconds later he says what'd you do sit up too fast i said wait no what are you talking about he says the the canoe it kind of shook a little bit i said no man i ran across the bridge back here he said no you didn't i said yeah i did (laughs) i said why'd you have your eyes slammed shut Remember what you said? Well, it's spiders, man. Spiders. <laughs> he said, I'm I, terrified of spiders. I didn't want to see what was going to get me. <laughs> Underneath that bridge. And so uh, oh that trip was fine. We did okay on that trip. So That might have been the one. 
I, I know that every time we did that, it was usually after turkey hunting. Mm -hmm. And I can remember one of the mornings when I killed the first turkey mm -hmm. I killed on the farm that we were hunting on, uh, caught probably the biggest smallmouth yeah. I've, I've ever not landed. Yeah, um, I remember that. We yeah. cry, I cry, I almost cried, and that yeah. thing was so big. Mm -hmm. I mean, he couldn't even get itself out of the water. Yeah, but that was yeah. a good one. I can't remember if it was that trip or probably that. Uh, one. It might have been. We did quite a few, but so let's. There, another one. There was a sunken bridge. I'm gonna use this as illustration, <laughs> and I'll never forget the first time I ever went down this stretch. I was with Caleb and Pertiball, and you come around this bend, and you could hear the water. You could hear it rushing, and mm -hmm. you could hear. And as you came around, you could start to see water spitting up. And what had happened, uh, it, we called it the sunken bridge. So a bridge had literally given way and had sunk, and now it became a waterfall. Gotcha. And so <clears throat> you had these pipes underneath, and, and there was a section to the left. Usually we ran river to left. Uh, but although Caleb, he took us over one time, it wasn't that high of a waterfall. So we were able to go over it and sit down, and we did that too. You made us tie If the water was down, good, you could just go right down the middle. The middle. Yeah. So yeah. then, But normally you'd have to swing left. Now, the problem was you'd swing left out here like this, and then you had to cut back to the right, and there was always a rock that sat right here, and you always hit that <laughs> rock, rock on the back end mm. and bounce off. And it wasn't hard. It was just every time. So this one particular was probably April we went down. I had this idea. I said, Steve, let's hit that. Let's, instead of getting wide, let's hit that bridge as close as we can, and we might be able to miss that rock. And sure enough, we came down, and we missed that bridge. I mean, we we went that, missed the rock, smooth sand. We were like, well, why didn't we think about that before? So... <laughs> Everything was good, you know, caught fish, whatever. So the very next month, May, let's say, the water level was down this time. Mm -hmm. So we hit this section again, and we said, you know, let's let's hit it like we did. Let's run that same line. Let's keep it close to the thing. What we didn't know, with the water level going down, there was a rock sitting right down, or a piece of concrete, just under the water level next to that bridge. Whereas the month before, the water level was up, we could Tick sail us right over. under it. Gotcha right over top of it this time since we were lower in the water we came down and you got to figure too this water it's going over top but it's also a lot of force down here that's swinging around mm -hmm. so you're getting a lot of force that and we picked up i don't want to i don't know how fast you're going but we're going fast enough well, we hit that rock and the boat stopped so so Good what boy. i remember <laughs> and and you know i was always the front of the boat and my job was to look for rocks <laughs> <laughs> and uh and I wasn't very good at it. Oh my god! And and because I was usually trying to hit the good holes, because Jared would point out this is a good hole, so <laughs> I was trying to hit all the good holes before he could. Um, and so I wasn't a very good rock spotter. But I remember when we would go through rapids, I would tell him, you know, just tell me where you want me to paddle, mm -hmm. and and you know what do you want me to do? And we're going down through this. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, hard left just hard left so i've got the the oar mm. in the water and i'm paddling hard left and we hit the the rock right as i'm going you know forward on a hard left paddle so we hit the rock and all my momentum went straight straight out of the boat so i flipped completely out i mean i'm that, pretty sure you did somersaults yeah I, did. I, I don't know if it was a summer complete somersault but you're out of the boat mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, no, you're in heels the overhead yeah. you're in the water yeah and because the boat stopped, now the force of the water is still coming. That boat now begins to tip up and over. And so I'm Lord. like, and I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had to laugh seeing my fishing partner, like, go out of the front <laughs> of the boat. Like, I'm like, you know, I wish we had it on tape. But in that short period of time, as that boat, the boat's now starting to tip over. So I, I literally, I have time to step out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And I step out and I'm like holding the boat here. Now he's tried to get up by this point. <laughs> The water was pinning and me the, down. You know how the water. Well, it, it, it flipped me around. So it. Yeah, you. So were I came around. out, and then yep. and then it it turned me. The rap the the force of the water turned me. So now the rapids, I'm pinned up against a rock, and all the water is just hitting mm. me. And my legs are up out of the water, and he's yelling we're at me. To, each other. He's yelling at me to stand up. <laughs> and your first time you stood up, you slipped and went back down. Well, yeah, I lost my shoe. And by this time, <laughs> like now, I'm up. I'm literally holding it, keeping it from coming over on us, and he's looking at me. And what he says to me, too, is, how'd you not get wet? <laughs> and I'm like on his back looking up at me. And I said, how about getting off your back and help me with this? Because there's a lot he of did. force on that thing. <laughs> well, and then, uh, but you, do you remember what happened to the canoe? Well, to the front of it. So the front yeah. was completely, I mean, there was a gap in it that mm -hmm. much, about that, you know, that long. When we oh, got it up was on the rock, there was literally water. Five flowing. or six inch gap. Uh, oh, yeah. Five or six inches long on the on the 
the hall, I guess. Yeah, and, and every and bit the of the point of the hall, and every bit of an inch and a half to two inches wide. wide. Wow. So we get it yeah. up, we get it up on the rock, and water's literally but, running out of the bottom of the. Yeah, and it didn't help the 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 way the canoe was and we're trying to get it out. And then of course the weight of the water, I think that kind of split yeah. it too. I don't know that the impact did all of the damage, but right <laughs> now, while this is happening too, like you said, his, you had like sandals on or flip flops. I had, I had slides on and he says, so I had throw me my, throw me my shoes. He had tennis shoes in the boat. And so because oh, his, yeah, he had your slides, flip flops were, hey, we're going down the river and he wanted to go after you. So throw me my shoes. So I look for it throw him his tennis shoes and he put them on pretty quick. And what happens next is, I mean, I still laugh about those vivid memories. And if you've ever tried to run in water, mm -hmm. like it's near impossible to run in water because your thighs, you yeah. can't pick them up, put them down. Steve was doing it though. I mean, he was, <laughs> you remember the high, high knees you used to do high football, step, high that's, step. And high school football did me well. Arms were wailing, <laughs> high stepping all after his, his sandal. <laughs> yeah, I went. I probably ran a hundred to two hundred yards. I caught. I caught one of the slippers, one of the slides, whatever you want to call it. The other one just. It, just it kinda, was every bit of a hundred because I remember yeah. looking and seeing you, and you you stayed after the other one, and it's kind of like, and there was a bend in the river about seventy five yards, and I saw him disappear around the bend. So I was like, so I grabbed a rod. I caught about three or four out of that hole <laughs> while you were gone, <clears throat> and but he he stayed after it. But when he came back, he. The, he didn't have, I didn't he have get the other one yeah. so so then uh, then we had to get the boat out and we still had a bunch of water yeah. in the boat. a lot of it ran out but remember I, we had to cut a uh, so we had those uh this big deer park water you know probably mm -hmm. I don't know how many ounces it had and so I cut the top of mine off and in the process of doing it I sliced sliced your thumb sliced into my what was this finger. finger yeah I sliced into it uh, I doubt we were carrying a first aid kit. I no, really no, doubt it, but I remember doing kit, yeah. not yeah. surgery, but I remember doing oh first God. aid on. Oh yeah, you. we had to we had to wrap it in something. I mean, it was bleeding bad. Yeah. We had to wrap Wrapped it up, up and probably used a little bit of uh, monofilament to to stop yeah. the bleeding. <laughs> Whatever we could find in there. Um, and we still had what? How many hours left on that? Oh, road trip? it was the only good thing that saved us is we we were we were only like ten minutes in. So we, but we, and we were done. We couldn't float mm -hmm. the canoe anymore. So we had to, I don't know what, I don't know what we did or how we did it. You had, no, we took it back up to a road. There was a no, road. No, no. You had in your tackle box. That uh, was a different story. That was one. Of I, you had that stuff in there and we I got did. the. There, we didn't, I wasn't able to fix it that one. That trip was a different I thought we floated camping all the way back down. Remember the camping trip when the John boat? Yeah, had I do. Leave? But I th I'm pretty sure we floated that boat. No, we had to take it back up and there was a little road off to the right. We took it back up and put it off and then had to go up and get the truck and bring it down to it. Boy, I don't know. That. Yeah. that one took, I had to do a lot. It took a fiberglass repair kit, brought it back in, Good worked Lord. it in. Yeah. Put a, um, like a skid plate on on it as well. So I was able to fix it. But the rest of the story, what's interesting is then we went back to the river lot that we were taken out of. So we weren't taken out of Deer Rapids because we have a lot down there now. So we get back down there to get the other vehicle. We had two vehicles. And the neighbor came down. They said, how was your all's trip? And we just looked at each other and just shook our heads and not good. Mm -hmm. and he said, what happened? So we explained what happened. And, and in that, we told him that, you know, you lost one of your flip-flops or sandals. And now, like I said, that's probably May. Well... <clears throat> You know, we're teachers. We're off in the summer. We work, but uh, sometime that summer, that neighbor they did a, a tubing trip down the river um, in their tubes, mm -hmm. and it was probably August. Um, he calls me up, says, "Hey, Jared," he said, "Didn't your buddy lose one of his sandals <laughs> on the one of your trips?" I said, "Yeah, he did." He said, "I think I found it," and I said, "No way!" Like, no way. He's like, "Yeah." So I got it, and I didn't tell him. I actually, I don't know if you remember, but I stuck it in I your know. mailbox at school. Yeah. I just went and didn't tell him we found it. Just stuck in his mailbox. He comes running down the hallway. Where, where did you get it? Where did you find it? <laughs> That's exactly I what I believe yeah. that we found that. And I still had the other one. It was still in my truck, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Just you know, case. you killed on the things you just the in case. One, and, yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, that one was, uh, and we've had plenty of, and we've had a ton of just, you know, North Fork uh, debacles too, but. Got to move on to, uh, uh, Chris was talking about the trough. Uh, so we, being teachers and coaches, a lot of the coaches would do an annual uh, trough uh, fishing camping trip. I, what would you say? Maybe eight, ten boats, probably, 20 people. Yeah. 15, 20 people go down, different coaches, basketball yeah. coaches. and Yeah, we um, do one or two days. Go through the trough general yeah. store. It's mm -hmm. no longer there, but you go there, and they would shuttle you up, and we'd mm -hmm. float down to a campground. 
And you know, the first one I'm a, we're going to tell, I wasn't on that. Whip, Whip, and and Steve borrowed this same canoe, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> they did, put did it. Did you on ever that name this canoe? I don't know if I ever <laughs> gave it a name. <laughs> okay. we, we can it makes me feel a little better. We can maybe have pe- <laughs> viewers. You can put potential names at the end of the story down for, <laughs> yeah. in memory of. It'll yeah. be so, revealed later. That's right. So I'm not on this trip, Steve. But uh, <clears throat> tell us, you know, you and Whip. So, that, uh, yeah, my boat partner was not as much of an outdoorsman uh, as as we are. And so we, we got in, and um, it was a nice day. The river was fine. Uh, I thought it was going to be a great day for fishing, actually. <laughs> and um, so when we put in, from what I remember, there was um, – you had the main stretch of the river, and then you know how sometimes those rivers have those little side little stretches and – and so he he wasn't too comfortable working the paddles and so on. And every time he would put it in, instead of putting the the, the oar, you mm-hmm. know, where it had the surface area on mm-hmm. the water, he'd put it in sideways <laughs> because you know he said it went through the water easier that way. <laughs> and uh, so we had to go down. I, I decided we're going to go down this little back stretch, and I'm going to teach him how to work the boat because. Now that I'm in the back of the boat, I'm I have to maximize my fishing, so I need somebody that's yeah. pretty decent in the front. And uh and and so we went down and I told him, I said, We're gonna go down through here. And as we go down through here, you're going I'm gonna teach you how to control the front mm-hmm. of the boat from the front. And we ended up in trees with spiders all over us. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it just it <laughs> it wasn't gonna work, but we ended up getting back on the river and, and we were coming down through a stretch. And it was before, see, I thought you were on this trip. but No, not this one. It was before a, 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 a big portion of slack water, and you had a decent set of rapids. And they weren't, it wasn't bad, mm. but they did, it did kind of wrap you to the left. And, and so you, you could tell the water was going to push you up towards the bank. And there was one big log sticking out there that had a little crook in it uh, that was just perfect for the front of a canoe to go into. <laughs> But as we're going down through there, you could see where the slack water hit and where the, the, the rapids were going through. I was like, I just know there's fish in that little area. And I've got to, I've got to get one or two cast in before the front of the boat gets down in there and spooks the fish off because the river was a little bit clear. So I, I just told him, hard left, hmm. just, just keep paddling on the left. And I had taught him that you could also, you know, could control the front of the, b- the boat, mm-hmm. you know, by doing a backstroke or whatever. And I don't know, I wasn't paying attention to him. I, I know I was standing up <laughs> and I was fishing as we're going down through these rapids. And I kept telling him, hey, you got to paddle, paddle left, paddle left. Don't let us get on the bank. Don't let us get on the bank. And as in the meantime, I'm casting. I, I had a bait caster. I think I had a little Yamamoto with uh but it wasn't it wasn't Carolina rigged or anything. Mm-hmm. It just had a, a, a jig head on it, mm-hmm. an exposed jig head. And so when I realized things were about to go bad, I, I jammed it down in underneath of my um, my seat, and I sat down. And about that time, we hit that crook. And when we did, of course, the water just hit us and tipped us this way. And so he went out. And he's hanging on to the front of the boat and the rapids. He's now, he looks like Superman because the water, <laughs> the water has pushed him. It's fast enough to push him up. And he says, what? And I've, I've got my one foot down on the ground. I've got still half a foot caught. I realize now somehow my, my jig head has caught me mm. under my left peck and, and my rod's getting ready to be- break because it's the, 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 the handle is jammed up underneath yeah. the seat. And so I'm looking. And the whole time, something's getting real tight around my ankle. I don't really know what it is. And he says, what do I do? What do I do? And I looked at him. I said, stand up. And so he stands up. And I said, said, throw stuff on the bank, anything that's sinking, throw it on the bank and give me a life jacket. Well, the first thing he does, because we're in chest deep water. You're in the water now? I'm in the water. Yeah, so the boat's flipped. Yeah. Well, the boat's, I'm I'm holding it up with one side to keep it from totally flipping right, right. and the water's coming in and, and just pushing it everything's gone all of our everything that we had in our cooler is 200 yards down the river already <laughs> you know and i'm worried about losing my tackle box my fishing my fishing rods and so he takes the first thing he does is he grabs the life jackets and he throws them up 
the what? bank. They're sticking in trees, and he's throwing everything else up on the bank. And I, and I'm looking at him. I'm like, I need a life jacket. He's like, it's up on the bank. And and I'm like, I don't think you understand. That there's something on my foot. And I look down. The the anchor is caught, and so the the water is pushing us downstream. And the anchor's tied off by on the back end of the boat, but it's now it is it's caught in rocks, and now the rope is 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 wrapped around my my ankle, and so the boat's pulling that way. The anch- the the anchor's stuck in the in the rocks, and so I wasn't really worried about drowning as much as I was losing my leg because, <laughs> because of the anchor. So I had to go under the water and get my leg out, and then we had to you know get the boat you know upright and gather up all our gear but uh the best part of that didn't drown well i mean it was you know. <laughs> even though he says it's yeah, not well, my first rodeo yeah, it's, like, it's I, not i'm yeah. used to yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, treading when, water and me. Well, i heard something the other day when when the, they said this when you make the decisions i make you better be pretty tough and so <laughs> so you know it was it was something that you know i'd been through it before in those type of situations and so i, I, I kind understand of, when you oh, all got yeah. down to slack water you like start off with a backstroke and started got well we know, had to gather everything up that was floating stuff, around yeah because yeah. he he you wasn't back. you didn't want to litter well we didn't want to litter <laughs> and you know he again he's not he wasn't the best of boat partners it makes for great stories but you mm-hmm. know he's, he's not gonna keep you out of trouble at least you know like he i got, did for you he would challenge that and say you're the common denominator <laughs> he might he might so I, what i remember too is i remember getting the boat back and it was all in one piece which was good and then i remember not having an anchor though i remember you, i remember you say like yeah man sorry i just we lost the what? anchor yeah and, it was your anchor and, wasn't uh, it yeah i was, I was like oh, okay so i had to cut it off but you know then <laughs> i'm just glad you're alive you know that type of thing so <laughs> So that trip, and then the very next year we do the annual trip again, and I'm on this trip. Uh, but the difference on this particular trip was still go through the Trough General Store. We had gotten, I mean, inches and inches of rain mm. prior, the week prior. And it was so bad, I can remember going up the river. I remember, uh, God rest his soul, Jeff Dodd and uh, and our athletic director, Jerry Kellican, uh, they were canoe partners, and they took one look at the river and it was oh i mean it was probably flood stage and they they went home they said you know this is not safe Mm -hmm. and we're going home and that that was smart they were intelligence intelligence (laughs) they were older they were smarter they're wiser (laughs) yeah and that was the right thing to do you know so the rest of us though we look at each other like well what do you think and i can remember saying you know fishing is going to be non-existent because the current is just way too fast Mm -hmm. but the trip will be quick because there, like you said there's some slow stretches in that so we'll get we'll get to the campground long trip what was a six seven hour trip probably Yeah. yeah We'll get there pretty quick. You know, the mm-hmm. scenery's good. You see some bald eagles and stuff. So yeah, I'm not opposed to doing it, you know. So Well, you never got us, a good story out of going home. No, no. <laughs> so we had to we had to see it out. So and I guess there were still probably six or seven boats that decided to stay in, you know. So mm-hmm. anyway, so in this particular time too, and I guess because you guys were partners the year before in this canoe and you wanted to try it again. They were together. I don't know why I wasn't in my own canoe, mm-hmm. uh, but didn't have a problem. Well, you had. I thought you had a second canoe. Well, I went in with uh, Mr. Nicholas and Mr. Foster, so okay. we were running three to a canoe. That's what it was. W- well, then that's what it was. Your, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So, and that was fine. Uh, I didn't want to be in a boat with either one of you. Uh, <laughs> well, the experience. three of us so, would have been worse than what. what. <laughs> so on this particular trip, we get down, and I, what I remember, I remember we were up front. You all were behind us. You all were behind Mephis. And you hit the section where there was an island of trees. And I say an island because there was a current that went behind it, but it was real wide. Mm-hmm. And it was this island was off to the left, and it, it hit a river right bank around the corner. And what I remember, and I'll let you know Steve talk about what happened with them up front. I remember them them saying, uh, man overboard, man overboard, get over, get over. And this was happening behind us. So we paddled over the bank and got out, and um, they well, were. So, so what happened? So, so it. There was a point. Okay, there was one tree, like right out the right out there, like just there, and it was just one nice one, you know, the perfect size tree, and and it it was an island that was flooded, mm. uh, so it wasn't an island. It was nothing but trees that were underwater. <laughs> Good Lord. And I can remember saying, "Hey, yelling up!" I thought I yelled up to you or somebody, and they're like, "Hey!" So there was a there was our group of boaters that went through. Mm-hmm. And then there were some people that we didn't know, two or three canoes that came through. Mm-hmm. And somebody said, just follow their path. Well, they hugged. 
they hugged every mm. one of those trees down through there. Yeah, you were right behind Mavis. I think Mavis and Mangan. Yeah, right? you were just, right behind. You just kept saying, "Well, we were right yeah. behind them." I, and I was but like, "I think well, you're a little bit off yeah. their left." You probably you caught a different yeah. current line. We caught a different current line. There's no doubt because because you could see, you know how. The water is. You can see the different yeah. currents kind of going through there, and I kind of looked and I thought, "This is let me, let pretty me sketchy." Again, this, this, you're talking about the islands here. You had this much thing, so they're running. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I thought you had a hundred yards. What I'm saying is, you had a hundred yards to the right of open, wide open, and mm. the daredevils, I guess, or whatever. But anyway, back well, to your I story. I followed here. that. What everybody else did. They all <laughs> hugged. They all hugged the left. So I hugged the left right. because there must have been something more treacherous to the right. <laughs> I don't know, Niagara Falls or something was over there. <laughs> something caused you to go left. And so we followed the people, everybody that went in front of us, and I thought we were going to be just fine. But again, I, I'm going to blame it on the person in the front of the boat, even though I'm the one controlling it. But I was doing my steering. I think he was working against me or something. But we we dead centered the uh, tree. And not, not dead center front, dead center middle sideways. And the, the rapids caught us. We kind of hit the tree, and the water kind of pushed us. And then when the when the canoe turned over. And let me say, too, it was gone. people that don't know, mm -hmm. like if you hit that tree here, it's going to bounce off here. If you hit it here, it's going to go here. You guys hit that thing. Like to your point, Perfect. you hit it dead center. And that thing, <laughs> what, did it roll up this way? Yes. All right. Yeah, we yeah. went. Yes, we went towards the open side of the river. And, and what happened next? Well, with whip was gone the, the water took him and then the water hit the canoe and it folded in half and it said i don't know if anybody listening has ever had that happen but it sounded like a shotgun wow and i mean it and it snapped perfectly in half and then i, I believe it went up the tree a little bit um oh, lord and and we went out <coughs> and it, we were smart enough this time to have our life jackets on the whole time and and we didn't have anything else with us, just mm -hmm. just our life jackets and our paddles and whatever we were wearing. And so he went down the river, and I went down the river, and eventually it washed us out to where everybody was on the bank. So yeah, I was walking back up the bank because, like I said, they said man overboard, man overboard, and I can remember walking back up around the corner and seeing them walk out of the river, both <laughs> terrified, uh, both in their life jackets, like I said, but only one had a paddle. I did remember that too. Oh, we only had one paddle? You only had one paddle. One of you did. And, and I said, uh, so you guys are all right? You said, yeah. And uh, I, said, uh, I said, what happened? And he said, uh, not good, not good. And I said, well, I said, let's go up. Let's go get the canoe. And Steve goes, no. I said, what do you mean, no? He said, uh, we're, we're not getting that canoe. And I, he said, it, it, Jared, it's it's, it's <laughs> wrecked. It's bad shape. And I said, oh, I can fix it. I can fix yeah. it. Can fix it. <laughs> that's, that's he, Jared, Jared's said, mentality no. is always, we can get it out. We can get it out. We, we can, can get it. it. We can fix it. And I just had to look at him and said, no, nah, he said, he said, Jerry, it ain't it's, happening. it's in the tree. I said, it's in the tree. He said, it, it, it's up in the tree. And, <laughs> and you couldn't see, we couldn't see it from where we were at. And, uh, and I just, I couldn't imagine like what, the, what. Well, so I can remember seeing this as it happened, as the water filled in on both sides and you could see the water going in and you know, those canoes are sturdy and they're mm -hmm. built really well and, and, and to withstand a certain amount of pressure but to watch that water take that canoe and watch what that plastic did as it folded itself inside mm. out um so yeah i knew we weren't it wasn't recovering good it. so at any rate so at this point too we still got to get down to the campground and uh -huh. I, we i think we figure we can drive back and you know see if we can salvage or whatever but I, what i do remember saying well i said so we, we can't salvage it you said no and i said well and I, I was i was mad i was irritated i'm not mm. gonna lie but <clears throat> but I was also thankful they were alive. Irritated, yeah. irritated's died. nice. Yeah. I, I don't know how long it, it took a long time for him to, to talk a, to me. <laughs> <laughs> have an anchor. I lost your anchor. Uh, I lost your boat. But I remember saying, I do remember saying, like, I'm well. I'm glad you guys are alive. Mm -hmm. and, you know that could. You I'm died glad I said there. that. <laughs> and then I said, my next thing was, well, go ahead and get another canoe so we can get on down the river. And I think Whip or you said, no. Nah. Well, neither uh, one of and, us. Yeah. And they were terrible. I mean, it was. I mean, that was. That's a, that's, that could have been bad. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean, no? Nah? You're like, we're not getting back in a boat. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Because now the trough, anybody knows the trough, when you get into the, some of those sections, there's no road or there's a train. Train and helicopter yeah, the only two yeah. ways you can get in and out. Yeah. And some, or the river. And so you guys made a decision just walk. Well, we were only 30 minutes into the float trip. Yeah. And so we, we, we decided we were, we had a little piece. We were, 
where we, everybody had pulled over to wait for us to make sure that we survived, uh, the rescue party, I guess, so to speak, um, there was a gravel road mm -hmm. and it was kind of a farm okay. field. Um, I don't know that it was really, uh, you know, currently being farmed, but you could tell it was a, an mm. abandoned farm. And so we just decided we were going to walk. Mm. A little and, safer. Huh? A little safer. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't getting back in a boat. <laughs> um, and, and so we, we walked and, uh, we started walking out this gravel road and, 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 uh, one of us had the oar that was left. I think we, uh, I think you guys, I think somebody provided us with a couple of drinks. And as we're walking out the road, I just, I can remember how, how, uh, I, I knew you were upset, um, from our conversation. And as we walked out the road, I'm looking at him and, and, uh, I was like, man, can you believe that? And all he kept saying is why, why is it always us? Why is it always me and you? He's like, I'm getting sick and tired of every time we're together. The, the stories come from me and you. And so we kept walking out this road, and and I don't know if he was carrying a paddle. And we had, I can remember somebody had a paddle, and the life jackets were, were on the paddle. And we're walking, and um, we had no idea where we were going. We were just going to follow this road to see where it went and hopefully you know hitchhike back or something. And this this old older couple – man and a woman they they came down this path and they they stopped and we stopped and they're like uh they kind of looked at us and they're like uh y'all are trespassing and we're like well you know we we lost our canoe and they're like what do you mean and they're like well we were going down the river and the woman said well who would go down the river on a day like today and we said well we did and there were a lot of other people too but and we're the only ones that ended up here we we're like is there any way you all could give us a ride to the trough general store? And they were like, Oh no, we're not going that way. Okay. So what do we do? And she said, well, she said, you just keep walking out this road. And when you get to the gate, there'll be, you know, hard top and the trough runs their, their, uh, Shuttle. their shuttles right through that road. So you can just sit right there. Or if you take a left, you can walk back to the trough. We said, well, how many miles is that? And they said, oh, it's probably a good 10 miles. Good Lord. And um, so we, we get out to the hard top. And I mean, we I'll bet you from river to the hard top was n maybe a mile. So it was a good little walk. And uh, and we, <laughs> we get out to the hard top and we see a, uh, a uh, shuttle coming. And it was a white van, big white van, had the, all the canoes on it. And, and we're standing out there and we're just waving our hands like this <laughs> and, uh, it stops. And, and I think Jared mentioned earlier that I'm, I'm from St. Albans, West Virginia. So from that point where we were on that road to drive to St. Albans, West Virginia is probably depending on how many wrong turns you took, maybe six to six and a half hours. Wow. And the van pulls up and somebody stops and, and you could tell because his accent was the same or deeper than mine and he said oh my god it's steve morris can't make this up <laughs> and we stopped and i looked and i looked in the front seat and and it was a, a guy that i'd played uh sports with in high school graduated with his name was uh, peanut we called him peanut <laughs> and so I, he looked he said what are you doing i said well we're walking home what are you doing he goes we're going on the river i said well don't do it <laughs> so we told him our story and the, and the guy to at the that was driving so we'll get in you all can get in the back we'll we'll take you back and we said okay so we we got all the way we're in the very back of this van so there's no you know we're in the back and and behind us is the the door and then you've got all the canoes and mm -hmm. stuff behind us and so we get in and uh i didn't recognize anybody else at least i didn't think and um and i said peanut what are you doing up here he goes oh we come up here and we do this trip every year I said, oh, that's great, man. He goes, he goes, what are you doing? So I said, you know, we do this trip every year too. And, you know, I live up here now or close to it in Winchester. And um, he goes, yeah. He goes, well, this this guy right here, he's married to so-and-so. And I said, oh, yeah, well, I used to date, date her sister. They were twins. <laughs> and then he looks and says, you know, he points at the biggest guy in the whole van <laughs> and says, yeah, well, he's married to her. And so my buddy looks at me and he's got the pad on. He goes, do I need to use this? 
I said, no, I think we're good. But, <laughs> but so, you know, out of all that, I think, I think, uh, we, you know, we, we ended up on a, on a, in a van t- with someone that I graduated high school with six and a half in hours away, nowhere. you know, you know, <clears throat> after just escaping death. <laughs> Uh, it's just funny how small the world can be. Uh, and I remember there was, and we're still on the river, and I remember coming up to an older couple too. They are probably about 60, the husband and wife. And I'm still, I'm trying to figure out, like, again, how did this happen? Because there's just such a, anyway, it doesn't matter. But I just, and then when we went by him, though, I said, I said, ma'am, did you see what happened back there? And she must have been in this section that saw it. She must have been behind you. Behind us. And I said, did you see what happened back there? She said, I did. And I said, could it have been prevented? <laughs> And she says, well, everybody else made it through there. <laughs> <laughs> so the, it, so we get, everybody gets down there, you know, we camp and everything. So the next year, we go back the next year and you say, I don't, I don't know if you went. I wasn't on that trip. We roll into I was the trough, banned, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we roll into the Trough General Store. And I, so I know I don't have a canoe now, but uh, roll into the Trough General Store. And I'll never forget, uh, George Nichols went up and we're, we're waiting to get on the shuttle to go up. And he asked the old hippie sitting there in the rocking chair on the, on the back porch. He said, hey, buddy, he said, we lost a canoe down here last year. He said, uh, by chance, did you all ever salvage that thing? And the old boy sat there for a second and thought. And he he kind of perked up. He said, yeah, he said, that one floated down to the campground down there. And he, he said, in fact, he said, I think it's out front. And we walked around front and sure shooting, there's that Indian River canoe in half. <clears throat> in half, and it's got geraniums planted in it. <laughs> so... <laughs> It lives on. <laughs> it was recycled. It was recycled uh, canoe. So yeah. uh, oh, that's a good anyway, story. Yeah, that was the the life and the death of of the Indian River canoe. But, yeah. Well, and and I mean the the I guess the the aura that follows me is is getting in a boat yeah. and and you know I, I kayak fish a little bit now. I do have my own canoe, which you're more than welcome to have. <laughs> um, but. Uh, you know, it's funny is, is last, the last time, so, so my, my parents live in Southport, North Carolina, and I, I have befriended a, 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 a flounder captain. And so we go out and go flounder fishing. And, and um, I was going out one morning and it was dark and the sun's coming up over the ocean and, and I'm looking around and every time I get into a boat, the first thing I look for are life jackets, <laughs> oars and flare guns. <laughs> And, and I'm sitting there thinking, and, and, and I, I, I can remember thinking, because I think about, <laughs> about us quite often when every time I step on a boat that, that you're not with me. And I remember thinking, man, I ought to text him and let him know that, that uh, I know where the flare gun and, and the, <laughs> and the uh, life jackets are. But I, I know this. I know my luck would be is I'd shoot the flare gun off too early and it ended up in the cabin with the life jackets and then it all, all catch, catch on fire. On fire. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of how things kind of work with me but oh, i was God. thinking too we did i also remember a trip on the a pecking creek in the old john boat oh yeah and i don't know why you know how it is it's one of those things when you're there's nothing else going on you gotta go do something you gotta find something to do whatever and i don't know if you remember that and we were floating floating a stretch and for whatever reason and he got up in the front of course pecking's not very deep but you decided to do it with a crane, like you see in Karate Kid. He's Mr. Miyagi, Mr. yeah. Miyagi, yeah. He's standing up here like God. this. Well, they, and I'm they, back here just laughing, just chuckling. You dared me. Yeah. Somebody said, no, dared that me. Right? Is that said, you can't do it. And I said, no, yeah, I can't. <laughs> and I couldn't. But I remember you did a, you did a 180 <laughs> and then just back flip, back flop on, onto the water. Yeah, it was probably a rock, but yeah. it, the pack is not very deep. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so again, um, again, I think the moral of the story is when you when you make bad decisions, you better be pretty tough, or or don't go boating with me. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but you, I mean, you're one. I mean, we've always loved having you around because there's you knew something funny was going to happen. Um, thank God, you know, you're still living. I mean, it's, it's well, it, yeah. anybody else that would have killed, you know, <laughs> the stuff you've been through. Yeah. So, uh, so if you to, need a boating partner this year, he is available. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think, if yeah. the fishing's bad and you need a story, just give me a call. Yeah. And we did invite just, you know, we did invite Whip, uh, but he, he said when he called him, we told him about doing this, he Whip just curled up in the fetal position and started like shaking. Yeah. He, the trauma was yeah, just too much. So. PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, from, the, yeah. from it. But, uh, but, but I will say <laughs> we did go up on the Susquehanna in the winter. Oh, that's right. In, in a jet boat. That's right. And, uh, and nothing happened. 
And it's funny though. We will talk about it. We were like, are we sure this is a good idea? Like <laughs> after everything we've been through, is this, is this the one that's going to. It's always, <laughs> it's always the ride there. Should we be doing this? And then the ride home is, well, we made it. <laughs> we made it this time. <laughs> Not much funny. to talk about. <laughs> and for those that are interested, too, we talked about, we used to read the Patrick McManus. And if you've never read his stuff, uh, he used to write in the back of the Outdoor Life, uh, Outdoor Magazine. Um, and it was humor. And then he also has books out. And it's kind of old school. But his hunting and fishing stories, he has a gift in writing that yeah, just – satire I mean, based sat on yeah. you know r real real events that he that that where things went wrong mm -hmm. that you and, and that's what's funny is is you and i connected on that oh, too my, early yeah. on yeah. and it was um because i would tell you stories and you'd be like man that's like patrick remanis yeah. and i was like i read him too and and the the thing about it was is that we would look and and read those things and and the reason i yeah. liked him so much was because i felt like i had lived some portion of every one of his stories right. at some point in my life, whether it yeah. be hunting or, or fishing, because, yeah. because there's so many things that have happened with us hunting, yeah. um, that fall in lines of the, of the canoe as well. Well, and trout fishing too, you know, we talked about, <laughs> um, we trout fished the pecking there. I'll never forget that one time. I don't know what you had tied on, but it was heavy and big. Cause I remember you let that thing zing and when it hit the water, like it made a huge splash. And I remember the trout fisherman up there, like looked around like what the heck is going mm -hmm. on here but another one was uh actually i'm thinking of two um you remember the story we were down at stony creek <clears throat> we went fishing drop fishing down there stony and <clears throat> you were kind of close there was a waterfall <clears throat> you were above it i went down below it. and uh i'm we're down there. i had a fly rod and i can remember hearing a big old truck go rumble by I look around it was mm -hmm. a state truck you know and people trout fishermen like literally try to follow those mm -hmm. And I'll be, and I wish I had a camera that day too, because I'll be. I mean, I looked up and watched that truck pull off right above where Steve was fishing. Driver jumps out, jumps up on top, puts a net down in, gets a scoop full of trout, hands it to the the passenger. He runs down there, drops one right above Steve, about not even twenty five oh, yards yeah. above you. Went up, changed nets, dropped net full below him, and a third net full. I swear, almost on top oh, of yeah. him. And I'm watching this, and Steve. Is standing there like this, and all of a sudden you see him look down. He had trout swimming between his. I had legs. two trout between my legs, I mean between my waders, and uh, I looked over and I said thanks, <laughs> and uh, he said these people been following us from wherever yeah. they. He goes, and I said, yeah. well, how far is that? He goes, that's two hours away. He said, he said I just trying to make him mad. <laughs> I don't think we caught one that day. Either. I think we uh, so one or... so we didn't on the fly rod. I caught yeah. him off a spinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did catch him on a spinner. Uh, but I know the other time that we were, we were on the Stony and, and, yeah. uh, and was that, that Frank was, was, there. was it spring yeah. or winter? It was winter cause it was snowing. Mm -hmm. Not like it is today. And, uh, it, cause I, I remember this cause it was the first, I, it was the first fly that I had ever tied myself on a fly rod that I actually caught a fish and, um, Jared here fell in. Yeah. I, what had happened? I, uh, it was cold. It was cold. Um, uh, had chest waders. It was snowing. Snowing. Uh, it was Frank and Dad and you and me. We had two trucks, and uh, I was fishing this little stretch here and fly rod and got my woolly booger stuck in a tree. And I'm talking, it wasn't even, it wasn't 10 yards, right? Mm -hmm. I can get that. I got chest waders on. I took three steps. I'm up to here now. Like, water filled oh up. <laughs> I'm like, you know, and I, I don't know if I ever did get the woolly booger, but <laughs> I backed out of there. I mean, super cold. Went back to the truck, stripped down, put my long underwear up on the thing to dry out. And had to, it took about 20, 30 minutes or whatever. And then I went rooting. I was able to get those back on, found a pair of shorts. I went to your truck, opened the back thing, and found a jacket that I could put on dry. And I, I looked like the stupidest thing out there. And I found <laughs> a did. pair of boots. So I had boots, long underwear, shorts, mm -hmm. a jacket, found a hat, and I was able to go back out there. And I did catch a trout after that. He did. And I can remember, I can remember walking back to the truck, to my truck, and as I got closer, I mean, it looked like oh, yeah. a tornado oh, yeah. or a yard sale or something because there was stuff in the trees hanging, hanging. out on the side of the yeah. truck and everywhere. It was all his old clothes, old clothes. just drying off. And then uh, the other one I'm thinking of, and we'll wrap this up, but uh, so I was I would go to a physical education conference in Cohen or Cowan, West Virginia. It was in the middle of oh, nowhere, right. West Virginia. Camp, and so what that's, was that called? Camp? Camp uh, Caesar. Yeah. And so we planned a trip. I said, Steve, I'm going down there to this place and – you want to do it? You want to trout fish our way out there? Leave about three days early, and mm -hmm. he said, "Yeah, I'd love to." So we went down to Harrisonburg and went west, 
and cross those streams and we ended up in and we were looking at this map well, we, over here Green we stayed Bar. yeah we stayed the night in augusta county yeah, um and turkey there. hunted in the morning yeah and i've caught native out of that little yeah, stretch caught, too. yeah. and then we we drove we Greenbrier and elk and this was before gps so we had an atlas hmm. And I remember getting off on a road and we were we were lost, which happened often We had an too. atlas and we had a map that we had to cross reference with because the, that had all the trout streams yep. of West Virginia. Because that other that name of that road was not on the map. I nah. remember that. And we had to keep driving to we like you said, that road ended. So we had to get, but we had the best time. Yeah. We had the best time. Yep. Yep. So Definitely. got any other good stories before we close it? Well, I, none that I can remember right now <laughs> i mean they're like he says hunting stories fishing stories i mean there's plenty but that mm-hmm. that camp is some good camping ones but that canoe story was one that uh well, what, what do you figure the interest is on that canoe at this point i have no idea i, I missed her probably, though. probably a bass boat she was <laughs> she was a good one i, I play the lottery that. every week hopefully you will. And, and and i think I, i'm not kidding you every time i buy a lottery <laughs> ticket i'm like if i win this i'm gonna pull up into his house one day with a bass boat well and say, Here's see, your just so you know i'm over it I'm, i am i am truly thankful you're alive like, <laughs> it's in all seriousness like we laugh about it now oh my god but uh, an accident like that i mean it could have there's yeah. so many times we could have died well, i mean yeah and it's yeah i mean it's and how we made it is beyond me, but uh, so truly, I mean that that could be replaced. Stories, the canoe can be replaced. <laughs> yeah. But our friendship, you know, goes way back, and, and we've had a great time. And so, yeah. Um, and hopefully, people like this. Uh, if people like this format, you know, comment below. Let us know, please. Leave a review, mm-hmm. and this is the kind of stuff you want. I I think we can do this easily, mm-hmm. like as an extra episode or something yeah, like that. Throw it in every so often. Everyone's got stories mm-hmm. that are fun mm-hmm. to talk about. Uh, before we go here and, and get out before this massive snow, basically we're going to be stuck here all night. What is your favorite places to fish around Loudoun County? I know before the, the podcast, we talked a little bit about where you work and stuff like, yeah. like what are some places that you like to go wet a line? I've not really fished Loudoun County that all that much. Um, More near I, Charlestown. Yeah. Or... I fished the Shenandoah a lot and I fished the Potomac. Okay. Um, from from Dam Four down, and then fished the, the Shenandoah there around uh, Charlestown uh, quite a bit. So that Harpers Ferry area. Right yeah, there. the Harpers Ferry. Um, and I really fish Millville. Is mm. kind of where I fish That's mostly, fresh. and I've, I've had I've had some good luck and caught some some really good fish through there, but not not recently. Mm-hmm. It's I don't know if the flooding has has really torn it out, up or what, but. Uh, we used to do really good on the on the Potomac from Dan Four down, and he and I've done that trip a couple times. Mm-hmm. But I used to catch there. There was a time we went down through there, and I think we caught just about everything that you could catch that was in the Potomac. Um, we didn't catch a muskie, but but we did catch a um, is it a tiger musk? Not not a tiger a musk. Uh, no, well we caught walleye. We caught, walleye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We caught it was a chain pickerel. We caught a chain okay. pickerel. Um, we caught. Um, uh walleye we caught i think we caught a crappie i think we caught smallmouth and largemouth and a catfish oh wow uh, i don't know if you were on that trip it was with mm-hmm. a, it was with a different different guy but uh but that's typically where i fish i've been looking for places and asking people in Loudon, and um you know they got a lot of little lakes and ponds mm-hmm. and things but uh I've not really fished a lot yeah, through there. There's not a lot, and it's usually the places that are available are private, and you got to mm-hmm. know somebody to get in. Because you look at Google, like, there's a thousand little lakes, but it's mm-hmm. like it's all privatized now. Mm-hmm. And when I grew up there, like I remember old guys telling me, like back when you had all these ponds that were available to you, but now it's gotten so developed, it's like they're mm-hmm. all like tight lipped, tight locked. You can't get mm-hmm. in anywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, I've wanted yeah. to fish that that stretch of the Potomac <laughs> from, you know, from where it where the two rivers meet mm-hmm. and down. Before you get to what is it? Um, uh, I know what you're talking about. Um, the falls, whatever the, the um, yeah, just the main strip from there all the way to the Great Falls. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to kind of float that and figure out where to fish from there because I imagine there's there's got to be some decent holes along there. The river gets gets wider and gets deeper, but I've just never really taken the time to do it. Yeah, you need a jet boat to do there because like if you want a kayak, it's a long float because yeah. there's not a lot. And I don't even know if White's Ferry still has a boat ramp anymore because they shut down mm. that ferry that came across there because I remember yep. growing up. Yep, yep. Mm. Yeah, you could take the boat from Leesburg and you get over the other side and mm-hmm. you dump in and there's that mm. stretch there. That was the only boat ramp for forever. Mm. But I don't know if that's still available since the ramp shut down. So yeah, that's going to be untapped. Well, how has the lower Potomac been for bass fishing 
uh, tile. Yeah, still still strong. Yeah, it's, it's still pretty good, I think, mm -hmm. uh, based on the people we've talked to and my experiences there. It just mm -hmm. comes down to having good vegetation that year. And honestly, it just needs to be stocked again. Like mm -hmm. you can still have good, good days there, but not like the hundred fish days anymore, in my opinion. But it's yeah. still solid with mm -hmm. all the pressure. But yeah, guys, I mean, th thank you so much for doing this. I think this was an a yeah, enjoyable experience. Want to yeah. throw out again, uh, Devil's Do, uh, Maple, and out of Kearneysville, West Virginia. Now, Steve, you said you know the guys there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who they are. Yep. So yep. Uh, yep. if you get a chance, support them. Uh, they're in Kearneysville. Pretty smooth whiskey. And a link to them and all the stuff that they offer will be in the episode description below. Again, this has been Fishing the DMV, us telling a bunch of stories and drinking alcohol. We'll see you next time. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.